operation. So now we're going to look at this last piece of the puzzle, which is to actually go through and perform the operation we've chosen using our analysis. So first we have bar beat marker generation. So once we do generate, basically what this is saying is that if we say preserve the sample position, don't move things, then the changes to the tempo or whatever's going on there isn't going to affect things. But if we say preserve the tick position, then things are going to move. So if you have MIDI that's programmed with this, those things are going to move inside this new bar beat marker generation. So we're going to say, okay. Now you can see a little bit of a shift there. Let's show up here our tempo. Expand this down. And you're going to see, because of the analysis we chose with our sensitivity, We've got some interesting things going on there. But for the most part, this is going to change the tempo of everything that's attached to it. So it's going to jump and move around just a little bit. All in time with this, right now it's not changing any of our data here. So our drum performance has not changed. Just everything else has changed. All the MIDI and anything else that's tick-based has now moved. So let's undo that for a second. We can also do groove template extraction. So let's extract this. We can say beat, whatever we want, beat, delete, just to make sure I know to delete it. And we can save to disk or we can save to groove clipboard. Now check this out. We're going to come down to our MIDI file here, select it, go to event, event operations window. When we do quantization, we can actually come through here and use our groove clipboard. We could also save them to disk, but we're going to use the groove clipboard and use 100% timing and apply it. And it's going to apply that first little bit of this right in there. So you can see, check this out, that beat right here that's just after the beat. Now this is just after the beat. This one pretty much stayed right on, maybe a little early, and this one went early too. So now our MIDI is matching the same groove as our audio. So if we have a drum loop that's MIDI that we're trying to match with a real drum, well then we can use this to extract that groove and it will move just like we asked it to. Okay, the next thing we can do is actually come through here now and make some changes. We're gonna change the sensitivity a little bit because I don't necessarily want every single thing here and let's not even do sub beats, let's switch it to beats. You can see that some of the important beats aren't getting picked up now, so maybe we should go back to subbeats, but just not go too detailed here. I don't necessarily want every little thing. We'll start there. We're going to go to clip separation, and now we're going to say separate. Every one of these clips now just got made into its own little thing. They're all separate at those particular analysis points. Then we can come to clip conform. And somewhat similar to quantization, do a strength check, exclude a swing. We can also choose if we want standard or groove with the groove. Again, we could use that same clipboard if we have one or one of those other options. But we're going to do standard. Now we're going to conform. Now what you're going to see here are things moving to fit right in the tempo. So as we see down here, this one used to be just after the beat. You can see where it was previously based on this MIDI note after I groove quantized this. Now it's right on the beat. So the next step, of course, is because we have all these gaps, we're going to do edit smoothing. We're going to fill gaps and crossfade, smooth them out. That way we're not going to have all those empty little holes there. Let's listen to this now and see if we have a noticeable difference or not. Well, definitely sounds like a little tighter groove going on. Let's undo a few steps. So 
Some of the beats are definitely pushing in one direction or another. It's very subtle, but after we went through all those processes, it really did tighten up that feel overall. Keep in mind, you're gonna wanna keep this in time or comparatively speaking with the other tracks that are existing. You wanna really check those to make sure you're not pulling it out away from that. So for instance, if you record drums and then record guitars and vocals and all that stuff, and then you fix the drums, well, if the vocalist really sang to what the drums are, the bass players played to the drums, then you're gonna need to really fix those as well. Make sure you're treating them all together. Okay, so that's been a brief look at Beat Detective. You can see the three-step process where we select right exactly at the right place. I did identify beat in this case. Then we did detection and then operation. So a lot of different really cool things going on here and it's a very powerful tool. Okay, let's move on now and talk about some other options inside Pro Tools.